Dear friends, today I will present you another exciting attacking game. More specifically, we will be looking at the typical pawn structure of the French defense, where white is gaining space on the king side by playing e4, e5. In the course of analyzing this game, I will provide you with a whole variety of different attacking schemes and motives. Let's dive into it. This is a French defense, as most of you will know. Here, the main move is knight c3, but a close second is knight d2, which is called the Terrorish variation, named after the German chess grandmaster Siegbert Tarrasch. Now, in this game, we saw knight f6 happening. This is a very popular move because it promises black a lot of potential activity. However, I think this move is already flawed. So I would provide it with a question mark, exclamation mark sign for being dubious. The better move here, in my opinion, is c5. And after c5, black indeed has fair chances to finally achieve equality, but not after knight f6. e5, here we have our topical pawn structure with white having a comfortable space advantage on the king side. Already here, white has some interesting options. So one line is f4 in order to establish uh, long-lasting grip, uh, a lot of space advantage fortified by the f-pawn. This is already a way to achieve plus equal. But in our game we saw the move bishop d3, which is equivalent. c5, attacking white center, c3, knight c6. And here white has to make uh, another choice. One line now would be knight e2 in order to play the other knight to f3. Uh, both knights then would be defending the somewhat weak d4 pawn. This is very harmonious and I would call this a positional variation. So this is a variation which leads to rather calm play. White has a slight advantage because he has this space advantage you can see on the board. But in our game, the white player chose the more aggressive continuation, knight g f3. This is uh, really a, a very strong move, not better than knight e2, but as I mentioned, more aggressive. So now, what can black do? One way black could go about is to try to exploit white's setup here, the setup with his knights. He could play queen b6. And now you see that the d4 pawn cannot really be defended. The knight is not on e2, but on d2, and there is really no way to hang on to the d4 pawn. So now white has to sacrifice his pawn by playing castling, takes, takes. Black is winning the pawn. And now after knight f3, uh, we have the starting position of a very complex line where white gets at least enough compensation for his pawn. But I think this position can be um, evaluated as slightly better for white. I was black would not really like to play this line because black is uh, very passive and has to defend and White's initiative is really long-lasting, so there's a lot that can go wrong with Black. But maybe this is the only critical line of Knight GF3. Another idea would be F6. This is a typical move you play in, in the variation with uh, the Knight on E2, which I mentioned before. After F6, White has to give up his stronghold on E5. And after knight f6, castles, takes, takes, bishop d6, rook e1, castles. I give you just one very uh, 
general line here without going into much detail. H3, um, preventing knight g4 ideas and also maybe intending to place a knight to f1, h2, g4, who knows. Queen c7, a3, in order to prevent knight b4. Maybe white, uh, white also wants to play b4 if black doesn't defend it or prevent it. Bishop d7, here it comes, b4. And now the bishop is supposed to go to b2. So black, if he wants to uh, liberate his game, has to do it outright. But after queen b3, of course, preventing e4, because now the d5 pawn would be pinned, right? This doesn't work. So black has to play the king to the side. And now white takes on e5, takes, takes, bishop b2. And now white is not attacking as in our main game. White uh, has no space advantage anymore. But what white has is a long lasting advantage due to the superior pawn structure. As you can see, black has an isolated pawn. And this pawn is uh, a long term target. While white has a nice three versus two pawn majority on the king side. So also this line is not fully satisfactory for black. Let's go back to our move knight gf3. In the game, black was playing bishop e7, castles. And here there is the last chance for black to become really active. So black could play g5. But in my view, this move is too ambitious, right? The idea is, of course, to play g4 and then finally win the d4 pawn. But White has a couple of good choices. For instance, could he just give up his point d4 by taking on c5? And now uh, knight d5 is the main move. And after bishop c2, the position is very unclear, but it favors White. As you can see, White's king is perfectly safe on g1 while uh, black's king due to the weakening move g7 g5 has no real safe place to go so this is plus equal but even better than d takes c5 after g5 is in my opinion the move knight b1 looks a bit paradoxical but um, d developing the knight but it is about the safety of the d4 pawn for instance g4 knight e1. Uh, now black should not allow queen takes g4. Let's say after c takes d4, cd4, knight e4, queen g4 attacking the knight on d4 would be good for white. So h5 is mandatory. But now white has time to stabilize his d-pawn. Black can try to, to attack it one more time with queen b6. Also attacking of course the pawn on b2. But white can simply protect his b-pawn as now black cannot win the pawn on d4. This position is already clearly better for white. If now black goes for the pawn, he will lose even after knight c3. He was putting uh, himself into a pin, so it's a self-pin. Normally you should not do self-pinning your pieces. And now the only move would be bishop c5, but after b4, the bishop c5 is being deflected and white is winning a piece. So after castling, um, there's one more alternative to the move uh, short side castling, which black now did in the game. We just saw g5, the other alternative is a5, but after bishop c2 or rook e1, white is simply slightly better. In our game, black preferred to castle. Um, castling, of course, is always kind of a standard move in order to play the king to safety, right? And activate the rook. But here the king is not really safe on the king side. As you can see, white has space advantage and the bishop is already well positioned to attack the h7 pawn. So now white plays rook e1. It's a natural move. If black should play f6, 
or f5, white could take on f6 and then there would be some pressure on black's e-pawn. Also, the square f1 is now vacated for the knight. So we, we see this maneuver knight f1, g3 and then maybe even knight h5 possible now. It's a typical standard setup. Now black played queen d6, but this already was a severe mistake. This position already didn't tolerate or doesn't tolerate any, any mistakes anymore. The margin of error here is, is very slim for black. Black is already under um, substantial positional pressure and a slight mistake like queen b6 can already lead to a disaster. So here after, uh, instead of queen b6, black had to liberate his game on the king side. f6 takes, takes, a3. And here we have a typical substructure with a semi-open e-file when the pawn e6 is weak and also the square on e5 might be used as an outpost for white's minor pieces. More specifically, the knight f3 might be jumping to e5. But in our game, we saw black playing queen d6. The move by itself is logical. Black is applying pressure to the only weakness white has, which is, of course, the pawn d4. But uh, now, white had the chance to transform the pawn structure in a very favorable manner. In the game, the white player chose knight f1, actually a standard move. It's a decent move, but it is a mistake because there was a better alternative. The idea behind knight f1, of course, is that the d4 pawn is now defended. So if black took here on d4, and took on d4 double question mark, white would uh, win the piece because after queen takes d4, the queen would be gone, right? And um, also after knight f1, as I mentioned before, the knight might uh, go to g3 and then later to h5. And also the bishop now has a free side. So this move knight f1 is fully logical but as you know, the better is the enemy of the good, right? That's why knight f1 deserves a question mark. Yeah? So what would have been better? The best move here is d takes c5. This is always an option white has in the pawn structure, giving up his stronghold d4 in order to get rid of this weakness. So the pawn d4, as you know, is white's only weakness, so we can get rid of the weakness by just capturing the c-pawn. And also, white now has um, some mobility, mobility here. White can play later b4 and then also c4. So white has a lot of dynamic actions. And also black's pieces can be attacked. I will give you now some interesting lines. Because from a theoretical point of view, this is the critical variation. And I will now present you some really interesting attacking ideas for white. For instance, after bishop takes c5, attacking the pawn f2, which might appear to be logical, but this move is already losing. After bishop c5, white can play the classical bishop sacrifice on h7. I think the white majority of you will know this sacrifice, but it's always interesting to look at the specific variations. So king takes knight g5, and now the more simple variations um, follow after king g8, because now the threat queen h7 checkmate force black to move his rook, but now after Queen f7, there's a fourth checkmate. Just see, it is very easy. Everything is forced. And here, finally, we have a checkmate. Uh, 
very often the black king has to go into the open, uh, which will be the only chance for survival. Let's first look at king g6. But now the fate of black is striking on the b1 h7 diagonal. Of course, black cannot move to h6. There is uh, uh, queen h7 coming. And I think there's a very quick checkmate here. Let's say this, this, and here we have this checkmate already. Mm, this is not working, so black has to try f5. But now we capture and passing. Uh, and now if king takes f6, rook g6, this is winning easily. And if the king just takes the knight outright, there's this double check. The king has to go back and now again a check. And if king takes f6, rook takes e e6 check, it's just, it's just mating very quickly. The final move here is king h6. But now we have uh, a nice continuation in knight c4, locating uh, the diagonal, right? Now, making the bishop now uh, active here on, on c1. Let's say bishop f2, king h1, d takes c4. And now after queen g4, it's game over because the black king is trapped, cannot retreat to h7. And it's just the threat is queen h3 check, king g6, queen h7 checkmate. That's game over. So after d takes e5, bishop takes e5, loses on the spot. The more resilient move is knight takes c5, attacking the bishop, but after bishop c2, uh, why is at least clearly better here? Because the knight on c5 is not so well placed, as you will see very soon. Now, what can black do? f5 or a5? I'll offer you the two pawn moves. So the first move is f5. In order to close the bishop's diagonal. But white is taking and passing. Okay, now bishop takes f6. Knight f1. We have now another typical substructure of the French defense. So white took on c5 and took on e, uh, f6, leaving black with his two central pawns. The problem with these central pawns is that the e6 pawn is backward and very often white is controlling the e5 square and hardly um, any time, so almost never could um, black play e5 here. If black could play e5 under good circumstances, his position would be okay, but this normally is not possible. So we see this pawn being weak uh, we, we see this square being weak and also we see this pawn being weak. Black's king side is um, quite weak because there are only two defenders and there are many more attackers in, in White's camp. Now the one idea is to place a knight on h5 indicated by the green arrows uh, but also bishop e3 now is, is a threat. So bishop e3 followed by b4. So let's say bishop d7, bishop e7 threatening to win the knight with b4, a5 preventing that. Now knight g3 and now let's say knight e7, knight h5, white is winning. White is just attacking with the king side and can deprive black of his important dark squared bishop anytime. Uh, after bishop e8, uh, in order to maybe bring the bishop over to, to g6 and also prevent knight h5, now white plays rook b1 and the, the idea b4 is winning for white now. So this is not working. So f5 is a bad idea, but after a5, gaining space on the king side, and preventing b4, white just develops uh, in the standard fashion, knight f1. And now bishop d7 already would be a mistake. Now we see another interesting idea. 
So this is a move you see for the first time in, in, in this video. We saw it after the bishop sacrifice on h7, that is true, but this is a bit of a, a different idea. Knight g5 without any piece sacrifice is now attacking the h7 pawn. So what could you do? One idea is to give up the bishop. The thing is, now white owns the dark squares and um, there are now some, some problems here with the g7 square and all the dark squares around the king. And of course, the dark squares in general. So why did the bishop pair control the dark squares? And if black could not take on b2 now, he would be positionally lost. So let's have a look at queen b2, only critical move. But now we see a beautiful idea. Bishop f6, attacking the soft spot g7. So of course now the idea is to play, for instance, bishop takes, yeah, I think bishop takes h7, king h7, then queen h5 check, and then queen g5 uh, is just winning on the spot. So gf6, more or less forced. There's like a thunderstorm in the background. You might hear it or not, I don't know. Um, now bishop h7, completely dismantling um, Black's king side. King h7, check, check. And now the, the rook is uh, being lifted to h3. Game over. It's a typical annihilation of uh, defensive pawns, right? So, yet another interesting motive. So, after knight g5, bishop takes g5 doesn't really convince. So h6, that's a natural move, but now look what happens. The knight is invading black's king side and you might think, well, that knight might not return anymore. How, how should it? But there are some tactics in place and don't forget that white has so many attackers. Attacker one, attacker two, attacker three, four, and the knight is also very close to the king. And this is attacker number six. So with so many attackers in place, there are always tactical solutions. So if the rook doesn't move, of course, white is winning the exchange. So rook fc8, but now bishop takes h6 already works. Let's have a closer look. So what uh, can black do? Let's start with g takes h6. Now knight f6. The king has to go to to the center on h8 it would be doomed after queen h5 but now white is threatening checkmate on g8 so if, if you took on f6 this is also losing here because now the queen would be just coming to g7 and then to g8 that's not working so bishop d8 making space for the king but now after knight h7 check king e7 Queen g7, there is a threat of checkmate in one already. So the bishop has to clear the first rank. But now after check, check, bishop g6, the bishop cannot be taken <clears throat> because of mate in one again. So that leaves black with a knight takes uh, e5. But now after rook e5, bishop b5, making space for the king. On, on, on d7, takes, takes, it's game over, right? Because black is losing the queen as there's also the threat of queen e7 checkmate. So this would be one of the lines. Another idea is knight e4 for black instead of taking on h6. By throwing a piece in the way of the bishop c2, of course, um, one, attacking idea of white you know leveraging the c2 bishop is now taken out of the equation but not really so there are not two winning moves actually bishop e4 is winning and uh, the rook sacrifice or exchange sacrifice if you want to name it like this for instance de4 and now bishop g7 the queen is now ready to join in with queen g4 or queen h5 so this bishop has to be taken, but after queen g4, it's uh, basically game over. If you take on h7, check, 
checkmate. You might refrain to take the knight, but after king h8, queen e4, followed by knight f6, and then queen h7 checkmate, it's also lost for black. So that was the move d takes c5 here. In our game, we saw knight f1. So also not a bad move, but worse than d takes c5. Now black should have taken on d4 and played uh, f6. That's why knight f1 deserves a question mark because it allows black to gain space on the king side and now there is no direct attack anymore. White position is only slightly better. White is having the superior pawn structure as you can see. But in the game black wasn't aware of the danger he was in. He played rook e8. The idea is to bring the knight over to f8. So the knight um, is supposed to defend uh, the king side. This reminds me of, of the adage of Bent Larsen. He says, give me a knight on f8 and I will not get checkmated. But unfortunately, this doesn't hold true for the present structure. The problem with the knight on f8, you will see this, is that the knight is not doing anything for um, protecting the soft spot g7. Now white played knight g3, a normal move but also a mistake. After d takes c5, which is better, black is already, if I look at my lines here, I think already losing. Let's have a look at, at these variations. One move is knight c5, bishop c2, and now let's say rook d8. Knight g5 again. And now after h6, there's another motive. Yet an, a new motive here. Knight takes f7, takes check, and now bishop takes h6, destroying black's defenses. After d c5, uh, bishop c5 is the longer line at least. Now f2 is under attack, but white can defend his f pawn and at the same time attacking black's h7 pawn. Now knight f8, that was black's idea. But now h4, throwing the pawn into the attack. So remember, I marked all the attackers before. One, two, three, four, five, six. But now we have attacker number seven. And let's not forget the master pawn here. The master pawn in white structure is the e5 pawn because the e5 pawn defines white's space advantage and deprives black of the squares d6 and f6. So I don't know how you want to define it, but it might be now seven or eight attackers in play. That's quite a lot. Let's say queen c7, the, the queen is making, um, making room for the bishop on b6 in case of b4. And also the queen is putting the e5 pawn a bit under pressure and adding to the defense of the sore spot f7. b4 asking black for a decision. So one move would be bishop e7. But now bishop f4 is quite strong, developing a piece. And because the bishop is on e7, the move f5 doesn't really work. But f5 is more or less forced because uh, white is now about to, to just to play moves like um, knight g5 or knight g3, knight h5. So let's say f5 here. But now we can take, leaving our bishop hanging because the e7 is also on pre. Takes b5 kicking the knight away from the center and now after knight d8 c4 white is opening up the position and black will be left with passive pieces and a weak pawn on e6 white is clearly better here uh, after bishop b6 
looks a bit more active, but might be worse. White plays uh, h5. So the idea is to create weaknesses on the dark squares by playing h6. This is uh, maybe known to some of you from the king's Indian attack. Uh, so there, in the king's Indian attack, that is, black normally stops white from playing h6 by playing this move himself. But now we see the same idea as uh, is normally used in the king's Indian attack. Knight h2 followed by knight g4 and uh, bishop takes h6 winning on the king side. So let's have a look at another idea black might apply, the move f6. But after ef6, gf6, knight e3, white is threatening, knight takes d5 as the e6 pawn is pinned. So queen d8 defending the rook, b5, and now there are two moves. One is knight a5, but after c4, breaking up black center again, White is winning. Now black's center has dissolved more or less. The position is open and you can see that the whole kingside structure is very weak for, for black. So white might just play his bishop to b2 and the rook to d1. And then white will be attacking black's kingside. Another move here would be knight e5, a bit more active, but after takes, takes. Again, c4, mm, black's position is ripped apart. Black might try to get his pawn center going, but it doesn't really work. e4, knight f, uh, bishop f1, now d4, and this is refuted by c5. Let's say uh, bishop c7, and now white could play knight c4, winning, or even sacrifice a knight, because after d takes e3, the rook is being switched to the king side. This is also winning for white. Now let's go back to our game. After rook e8, white didn't take on c5, so she did not really uh, have this uh, option uh, on, on the radar. She continued with activating her knight by playing knight g3. And now, it was necessary to take you on d4, playing knight f8, uh, let's say bishop e3, defending the pawn on d4, bishop d7, knight h5, knight g6, knight g5, followed by queen f3, and white has really good attacking chances here. So I don't know exactly how we can evaluate this position. I think white is clearly better here. What I can say, however, with a lot of uh, determination is that after knight f8, question mark, knight h5, exclamation mark, white is winning already. And as I mentioned before, it is all about the dark squares here. g7 first and foremost, but also as a consequence of this g7 pawn being weak, the squares f6 and h6 and the knight f8 has like a blind eye uh, regarding these dark squares. Now there is nothing black can do to avert getting checkmated in the long run. In the game we saw c takes in d4. Let's have a look at some alternatives. One would be uh, knight g6 and then we see the second knight approaching black's kingside. C takes d4, black has to look for some counterplay, but now white can just ignore what's happening here in the center and activate his queen, attacking the soft spot f7. Now there are two lines. Line number one is defending f7. Now uh, white has two winning moves, queen h3 and the more direct knight takes h7. Takes knight f4 and you can see that now the queen is poised to, to getting moved to h5. King goes away, queen h5 nevertheless. Yeah, the idea is just knight takes g6, f g6, bishop takes g6. Now let's say d takes c3. 
um, there is some tactical uh, constellation in place which you might not be aware of uh, at first glance. So we, we have some pressure here on the F2 pawn. It's a bit concealed, but have in mind that white wants to play knight takes F6. But after FG6, there would then be the threat queen takes F2 followed by checkmate in place. So white has to be a bit um, patient. Uh, patient. White has to t recapture on C3. Now black cannot do a lot. Let's say bishop D7. And now we we chase the queen away from influencing the F2 pawn. And now after the queen has gone from the diagonal, we can finally take and checkmate black. So this is one line after queen F3. The other line is uh, bishop G5. So the knight is uh, getting removed. Remember, the knight was just uh, capturing on H7 in, in the rook F8 line. So now the knight is being removed, but black is really missing, is dearly missing his dark squared bishop because it is all about the dark squares. For instance, d takes c3, knight g7, and that's game over. Um, if the king takes a knight, we see bishop f6 check, followed by queen h3 or even h5, followed by queen h6 and mate on g7, as indicated here. Mate on the dark squares. So this doesn't work. A bit more <clears throat> competitive is uh, knight takes e5. So white, uh, black wants to get some some kind of uh, counterplay in the center. But after rook takes knight, knight takes rook, knight of six exclamation mark. Um, white is um, chopping his way through uh, the thicket of black's kingside. So, for instance, gf6, bishop h7, uh, check again. For instance, takes, check, threatening mate on h8, knight g6 only move. But now finally, black is doomed on the dark squares. Queen g7 to come. So, what else can black do? Black can refrain from taking the knight, king f8, check, king g8, one more time, check, okay, king f8, and now the h file has been opened by removing the pawn h7, now we have the threat of queen h8 check followed by queen takes e8. But black cannot really prevent this, so now knight takes d3, removing one attacker, and now um, this move queen h7 is uh, uh, quite strong actually. The idea is um, queen um, g8, rook d8, check. Well, there, was, there were two ideas to be honest. Right? After, you, might, you might have wondered why not queen h8 outright. So the other idea of course and, it, and this is a, actually the better idea. I for, just forgot to say. So the, uh, the main idea is just to check here and then give checkmate. So let's say rook d8, but then we see this idea unfold, right? Checkmate. So after um, uh, knight g6, knight g5, this is what you just saw. Black is being crushed. Now, what else can black do after knight h5? Rook f8. Um, no, no, sorry. I was just jumping to, to the wrong position. Queen d8. This is what I wanted to, to show. Queen d8 is preventing um, knight g5. So controlling the, the square g5. Now there are two interesting ideas. Let's start with idea number one. I give you two ideas because I promised you at the beginning of the video to just provide you with a full toolbox of attacking schemes here in this very pawn structure. So now let's start with the d takes c5 line. If now bishop takes c5, 
guess what's white's best move actually it is queen d2 not the only winning move but that's the best move the blunt idea is to take on g7 with a knight and then bring the queen to h6 that is the strongest move okay black can prevent that by <clears throat> attacking the knight h5 now the knight goes back and of course now if black doesn't do anything specific white could just hold on to his extra pawn so bishop c5 is forced but now after bishop g5 uh, of course the bishop wants to go to f6 if the queen would move now and then queen d2 queen h6 followed by mate on g7 would follow so bishop e7 forced in order to challenge that bishop but now h4 and black cannot do anything anymore so white just wants to to bring his queen into into play and then maybe his knight to g4 and that would be game over so f6 maybe the last um, possible moment to become active for for black on the king side but now after ef6 bishop f6 bishop c2 uh, it's a quite a good move to, to have some pressure uh, in the d-file so if e5 now um, either bishop a4 or bishop b3 is uh, happening I think bishop b3 and then if black plays this is just now improvising me right me improvising um, because uh, I didn't have this in my analysis but I think the problem with this move is weakening d5 if this is now uh, defended with the bishop e6 I think we can now win the pawn on e5 so either a bishop takes f6 queen f6 bishop takes d5 uh, winning the d-pawn right or uh, maybe just taking the e-pawn outright both look very good right so e5 doesn't work bishop c c2 is a bit of a prophylactical move sometimes in the course of uh, an attack you sometimes you you um a execute a silent move uh in order to just prevent counterplay so my line i had here prepared is uh, bishop d7 and now just queen d2 let's say a5 rook d1 fully centralizing uh, the pieces so preventing e5 forever rook c1 and now a strong move is apart from activating the queen like queen f4 a very strong move is just now placing the knight better remember here the knight is um, dominated cannot go to any of these squares by black's pawn structure but uh, the knight can be redirected in order to just go into the soft spots of black's pawn structure the dark squares right this is a fantastic square g4 uh, so this is a winning move but queen f4 would also be winning actually so after knight h5 we just looked at knight g6 and queen d8 and these moves were to no avail in the game black took on d4 and now white made a mistake um, maybe not a huge mistake she recaptured here so white played all the way here all along white played really um, logical and reasonable moves right but of course sometimes there were better moves like d takes c5 on two occasions and here it would have been better not to recapture on d4 but of course in a, in a game situation in case of doubt you you play it safe so you just recapture here so i don't want to to blame her for for doing this but there would what would be already have been um there would have been two direct wins already so one is knight g5 you just ignore this d4 pawn it's about more than that already right um now um queen f3 is threatened actually queen f3 and uh, if then bishop takes <clears throat> g5 bishop g5 the dark squares would collapse let's say uh, knight g6 queen f3 anyways 
rook f8 and now I don't know whether knight h7 works like we saw before but then just a simple move uh, queen h3 is decisive right you, um, the threat is knight f6 followed by queen h7 checkmate so we we don't have to bother bother with uh, pawns anymore you know with with what is going on in the center it's it's a di direct um, ko but another interesting move is actually bishop h6 this is the second ko punch right here but actually we we will be seeing this in our game so i i will not go into a detail here so this is the other winner so in our game the white player took on d4 and now black should have played knight g6 or pawn g6 uh, in the game we saw bishop d7 which was losing on the spot let's first have a look at the alternative move so one move is uh, a g6 attacking the knight uh, preventing knight g7 ideas but now um, knight f6 is happening and of course we see the square g7 being the problem um, for instance knight takes d4 knight e5 knight d7 takes takes bishop e3 it's just um, winning back the knight and then there is an attack on the h file so that is an easy win e5 the best the best bet here so now it becomes a bit more complicated and even though white map might be finally winning here in this line um, um, it is much more complicated right than what uh, what happened in the game so this knight g6 was a decent move maybe was the best move here now let's go to the game in the game after cd4 black made a mistake knight e7 and now finally we have a position where we can apply our topical move if you are familiar with my previous videos you know what i mean it is a move bishop h6 maybe not the only good move but it is clearly the best so bishop h6 attacking the soft spot g7 this is the winner if black now is refraining from taking the bishop of course it's now about the dark squares on the king side the, the g7 square is black's downfall so what can black do let's say queen takes b2 rook b1 queen a3 rook takes b7 uh well threatening bishop takes f8 followed by rook takes d7 so the bishop has to be defended but now the square h6 is vacated for the queen right at the same time black's queen is under attack let's say queen a5 preventing queen e2 for the time being but after rook b5 bishop b1 now the queen has to leave her guard of the d2 square and now the queen is finally approaching black's king in a decisive manner maybe you have wondered what happens if black just took on h6 which was the game continuation and now again you might press on stop on pause what do you think is white's next move so white's next move is uh, easy to overlook which makes the move bishop h6 one move earlier uh, very precious not everyone would have found the move bishop h6 in this position because this move has to be followed up with the following move which is queen d2 it's a silent move so this is a, a nice example for a silent move attack i will come up with another example of a silent move attack because this is a very dangerous and very beautiful category of attacking so you play bishop h6 you disrupt the pawn structure and then you're not doing anything um, forced on, on the surface you're playing a silent move not giving a check not taking something 
but of course there is a thread and this thread cannot be met with for instance if now black is playing knight g6 which did not happen in the game in order to play the bishop on f8 well white just continues with queen h6 bishop f8 and now the problem is the h7 square in our game we saw black seeing this line playing knight uh, playing bishop g5 but this was just desperation because after knight takes g5 very simple black just resign that was a splendid attacking game from monica calceta ruiz i hope you liked it and as i promised i will present you with a more with one more silent move attacking game maybe in the next or the following video